in the financial business for years and obviously he's done that and now he's where he is now so previous jobs everything is related to finance um, then his spouse come on everybody knows who his spouse is Jolene he's better off, well, better off you know, by all means you're better off <laughs> uh, uh, animals he's got sky ice and Bino uh, like the Bino business yeah, the Bino, yeah, yeah he is or she is what he, he is uh, hobbies uh, well you didn't put hobbies here as golfing you put it as an interest I would have yes. put it as golfing <laughs> it's both uh, one, one thing that I found interesting he, he actually collects die cast model cars which I haven't shown you mine we have a lot of oh, things to talk about and he's got a few big ones as well yeah. so uh, activities camping golfing and shooting yeah, so, so yeah interesting um, burning desire to keep on innovating I think everybody should have that burning desire so well done there and then key to success change is a necessity which it is and then one thing that I think it's not on his profile but but one of his biggest success stories I know about is he saved a client four million rand from stars and if you want to know more about that, one to one with it. So, yeah, I would like to say it. So from the 1st of September, Jock has come back home. Thank you very much for that, Jock. And uh, the other Jacobs, not behind Jacobs, actually his beautiful wife. Uh, she's the other Jacobs in the JJT. Say again, yeah, you want the boss. Yeah, the actual boss, yeah. No, great. So that's the partners in JJT. Uh, guys, a, a quick, about the business valuations, the definition. Business valuation is a process and a set of procedures used to estimate the economic value of an owner's interest in a business. Here, various valuation techniques are used by, the, by financial market participants to determine the price they are willing to pay or receive to affect the sale of the business. If you look at these two items I've highlighted, various valuation techniques, and willing to pay or receive. If I tell you that an accounting firm is worth 10 million, but their turnover was only 5 million, it doesn't make sense. The same with the business that actually provides products. I could say it's worth 3 million, and they've got a turnover of 40 million. We need to always determine why we make those assumptions. And I can tell you that each and every industry has a different set of rules when it comes to business valuations because they operate differently, they have different patents and trademarks, IP that's involved in them. And that all makes a difference to a business valuation. So, the purposes of business valuations, I'm going to focus on these six items today. Sale of shares, Sale of business, planning for growth, funding for business growth, insurance, and then estate plates or marital dissolutions. When we look at sale of shares and why we split sale of shares and sale of business, sale of shares is actually those shares within your business you would like to sell. Those shares, if you sell them, take over the assets and liabilities that are registered within the business and that affects the business valuation there's also a few things and, and an example i can use years ago i did a business valuation for a client that was looking at purchasing a business and they were trying to sell contracts these contracts they had for service delivery to a big corporate company said in that contract that they're not allowed to transfer those contracts out of the business or out of the 
out of the structured entity. And that meant that they actually needed to buy the shares within that company so that they could gain those contracts. At the end of the day, the client didn't buy it because we couldn't settle on a, on a proper market value. And these guys that were looking at selling that part of their business couldn't understand the implications. So that's where we developed the client, it's actually saving them money and risk. If we look at the sale of a business, an example I'd like to use is in the case like Derry, where he has a leak detection division and a, a, a construction division and a repairs division. In your business, because you've got different divisions, you can actually set the part and evaluate. If you'd like to sell only the leak detection part of the business, we can come in and we can value that part of your business and then you can sell that. Some people don't understand it, but in the bigger corporate businesses, that happens quite often. In the case of Postec, the One Logix years ago, that's exactly what they did. Now, when we look at planning for growth, if you go to Vander and he said this year we've put all that stuff into our Liberty system, you need about 10 million to retire. Now you come back and say, okay, I'll sell my business for 10 million. But do you actually know what's supposed to be in your business in terms of assets, liabilities, income and expenses for you to be able to sell it for 10 million? And that's where we can come in and we sit with guys like Claude and we say, okay, this is what your expenses, income, or your income expenses, assets, and liabilities are supposed to be so that you, in five years, can sell that business for that 10 million you need. When we look at funding for business growth, funding for business growth people usually just take, okay, this is my financials, that this was my performance, and we go to the bank and we ask for an overdraft or a credit card, but sometimes that's not enough. If you've got a proper business plan with a proper business valuation in five years time, that gives a, an investor, that gives the banks a lot more security because it shows them that you've actually gone through all of this, you've planned properly. And they can then trust you based on what you've planned, where you've, your vision is, and they understand that and they buy into it. Investors will never invest in your business without one, proper business valuation, and two, with proper, without proper projections of where you're going. In the insurance industry, my friend Werner here. When they do those buy and sell agreements and those policies with regards to businesses, it's important to have a business valuation attached to that. Because when we get to this situation, where did that go? Okay. The estate lights and the marital dissolutions. And in an estate light, if there was a buy and sell agreement, we need to come in and we need to go and do a business valuation at date of death. And I spoke to a client yesterday about this as well again. We need to do that business valuation and then we send it to SARS for approval. It's not that we just do it. And that means we need to have the proper information together to show them that you know, we actually did a bit of investigation, we checked everything. With a marital dissolution, it's important to have that business valuation done so that you and your ex-husband or ex-wife have something to agree on. <laughs> Especially with being with anti-nuptial contracts, that is quite important that a business valuation is done. Because we know in situations like that, it does become difficult <coughs> where people can't agree on anything. And then we become as external as an external party. And we do that business valuation. We've actually, in, in, a, in a case, we've been appointed by the court, the high court, to look at a business valuation and the separation of the estate. 
Uh, and that's quite eventful, uh, uh, quite fun, quite difficult as well. But we deal with those kind of things. Guys, that's all from me today. Please go on to Facebook, the wrong button. Go on to Facebook, like our Facebook page. We have stuff from LinkedIn. And uh, then something to look forward to in the coming months, weeks, and years. Our YouTube channel, and that's why we're recording today. Because our YouTube channel is going active again. Um, at JJTACC, you'll see the Pratera logo on there. And uh, Jock and I will be on there giving information, uh, teaching people so that they understand going forward what they should look out for and, and what's important within the financial industry. Guys, that's Howard Jacobs, JJT. Thank you very much.